thanks for coming to my channel. Uh, I'm Brian, and I am blogging uh, my experience, um, my experience in in educating myself in the work of Carl Jung. And uh, today, I wanted to share. Just recently, in October of 2018, I was invited to give the uh, the first. Uh, Robert Johnson Memorial Lecture at the Pittsburgh Young Group. And uh, in case you don't know Robert Johnson, he was a very well-known, best-selling uh, Jungian analyst who died in September of 2018. And, and yeah, like I said, the Pittsburgh Young Group invited me to uh, give him a memorial discussion on his work, um, uh, his, his text, Inner Work, um, which I highly suggest. And um, the, the, the story of the creation of that lecture is interesting. And I uh, wrote a blog post about that, so I'll link that in the description. Um, but quickly, I just wanted to, um, to review what we accomplished in the discussion of Robert Johnson's inner work. Um, now, a couple of interesting things we talked about with, with Johnson's life itself. Um, I, will, I will add a, just to note that this, video is somewhat lo-fi. I'm just sharing a screen share of this Google Doc, obviously. I will also share this Google Doc. I'll make it public, and uh, anyone who's interested can check it out. Um, one thing we, we we decided to chat about during the lecture is, is starting with Robert Johnson's life, and um, something that I think is really informative of, of that, uh, about some of his intellectual influences were um, come from the time where he, he, the time he spent in the uh, during the first ever term at the Zurich Institute in uh, Switzerland, um, wh where he was analyzed by uh, both Carl and Emma Jung um, pretty extensively. And he re wrote a letter reflecting on that that we kind of read out loud. And it was uh, it's pretty funny and interesting. So I would check that out. We then did um, just a kind of really quick review of his kind of his body of work. Um, he had a pretty vast body of work. We specifically focused on the texts "We Owning Your Shadow" or "Own Your Shadow" and "Inner Work." Um, uh, good text, and, and he has others as well. But that's what we uh, talked about. Um, and "Inner Work" was really the jumping-off point for our discussion. Um, but we had a really fascinating digression into um, the reason. Um, in case you're not familiar with inner work, inner work gives a sort of set of protocols for um, Carl Jung's analytical psychology, how to really um, get really explore your dreams deeply and how to work with a technique from Jungian depth psychology called active imagination. And the question I think naturally arises: why did Jung himself, who was a prolific writer, not have time and didn't feel the need to write a text like this himself. Um, and that's, that's always uh, struck me as somewhat cryptic um, about Jung. And uh, we had a really great discussion on that. Um, and I think it really comes down to this idea of the Jung's critique of, of this idea of the imitation of Christ. And, um, and, to discuss that, I think we have to do another slight digression into uh, Carl Jung's book, uh, his text, the Red, the Red Book, which recounts and comments. Uh, it recounts some comments, com comments, excuse me, about um, Carl Jung's imaginative, imaginative experiences between 1913 and 1916. Actually, what's fascinating uh, about that is um, the day of the the the, the um, talk. Uh, was uh, of the Robert Johnson Memorial was on October 13th, 2018, which according to some scholars was the first um, entry, the first imaginative experience that was recorded by Jung happened in um, October 13th, 1913. So 105 years before the talk. And, um, and uh, on the one year anniversary of, of me starting uh, training in uh, my training analysis, um, so it's, uh, that felt significant to me. So back to the Red Book, um, you know, it was it always has been a central text in Jung's, in Jung's work, but it wasn't published until 2009, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, 
And a quote from Jung on the Red Book, the years when I pursued the inner images were the most important time of my life. Everything else is to be derived from this. Everything later was merely the outer classification, the scientific elaboration, and the integration into life. But the numinous beginning which contained everything was then. And so inner work, Robert Johnson's text, gives us a framework and jumping off point um, to do our own, to have our own engagement with the unconscious, similar to um, at least somewhat similar, at least uh, perhaps to Carl Jung's experiences in uh, from 1913 to 1916. Um, okay, so why did Jung not give us this framework, especially since Jung uh, kind of has this diagnosis of modern man, uh, of modern uh, people, of modern humans, um, as kind of spiritually malnourished for 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 symbolism. And so this, uh, these protocols offer us a chance to kind of literally nourish ourselves um, with, with symbolism. Um, yet Jung uh, kind of keeps the method or, or doesn't elaborate on a method. And, and the reason is I think we can find directly from the Red Book itself. Um, uh, and so, you know, briefly stated, and we have to talk about this idea of the imitation of Christ and how, how Christ appears in the Red Book. Um, so briefly stated, at an early stage, Jesus became um, kind of a collective figure of the unconscious for Young. And um, and for Jesus's contemporaries, they expected a figure to appear. And, and Jesus kind of takes on these projections. In this way, uh, the life of the actual Jesus, um, the, the, you know, the, the carpenter, <laughs> Um, was exemplifying for Jung an archetype of the Christ, or in kind of the psychological language of analytical and depth psychology, or uh, specifically analytical psychology, the, the, the self, which is kind of a more inclusive word for the Im inner image of God, um, which resides in every person for Jung. So Jung was more interested in kind of these archetypes of the collective unconscious, which when um, a historical person uh, would come across Jesus, these archetypes would be constellated in them. And if you have any questions about that, just leave them in the comments. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of kind of uh, psychological terms being thrown around, um, but I, I want to get through this video, uh, this, this, this part of the video. Okay, so um, moving on to, so, so we have this idea of um, Christ as someone who's exemplifying um, archetypes from the collective unconscious and constant and helping other people kind of uh, experience them in their own psyches. And so in the Red Book, um, it, during these imaginative um, experiences, we get um, to be Christ oneself is the true following of Christ. If I, if I thus truly imitate Christ, I do not imitate anyone. I emulate no one, but go my own way. No one can be spared the way of Christ since this way leads to what is to come. You should all become Christ. And this kind of these motifs, these kind of uh, inner inner uh, re, uh, inner attainment, um, in on an individual basis, basis. This motif appears throughout the Red Book. So, with all this stated, um, you know, I think this can help us wrap our heads around, like maybe why you know uh, this kind of a process wasn't kind of explicated by Jung um, in any sense. And so with all that stated, it's not a critique of the at all of the thought process behind inner work, which does give us a process because he goes in the text to great length to avoid this this problem. Um, inner work is not some kind of checklist um, that one follows to achieve individuation, um, which is kind of the uh, Jungian uh, kind of a image of enlightenment almost. Um, An approach like that, it could probably be a detriment um, actually, um, it can be very reductive if you approach it like a checklist. So, um, however, I found this text uh, truly important, inspirational, and deeply impactful for myself and others. And, um, and it can be used in kind of these following ways, um, amongst others, kind of a diagnostic tool if you're unsatisfied, unsatisfied or stuck with inner development, you don't know where to begin, or you want a bit more structure around the inner work you're already doing. And I kind of compared it in the talk to um, chords on, uh, I'm not a musician, but um, there's a finite amount of chords chords that can be played in notes. However, there's, I think, an infinite amount of just surprising and beautiful, um, 
beautiful music out there. So um, from this raw material that Robert Johnson gives us in inner work, um, we can really use it creatively. So um, just to talk about what, how, what we talked about in inner work itself, um, you know, he, he go, we talked about the unconscious, um, which I'll just read one, one note. We have the floods of feelings make no sense to the conscious mind because the conscious mind did not produce them. There's material contained in our minds that we are not aware of most of the time. We sometimes become aware of a memory, a pleasant association, an ideal, a belief that wells up unexpectedly from an unknown place. So we started off with a discussion of the unconscious. Um, we then moved into um, dreams and the four step approach that Robert Johnson suggests, which is making associations to the images, connecting dream in images to inner dynamics, interpreting the images and uh, doing rituals to make the dream concrete, um, which we talked quite a bit about that. Um, and yeah, it was very interesting. And then we, of course, moved into um, active imagination, where we talked about inviting the unconscious, dialoguing and experiencing the images, adding an ethical element of values. So exploring uh, inner attitudes and beliefs towards the images, which was very interesting. And then again, we talked about making it concrete with physical ritual. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of uh, brief look at Robert Johnson and uh, how, how he's related to the work of Carl Jung and some of his thoughts on inner work. Thanks for checking out my, my uh, channel and I'll see you in the next video.